Oh, I have this one called Agro Scout. Let me take a look at it really quickly. So Agro Scout, the whole idea with it, uh, it's not actually super duper aggressive, but I had a quest for, uh, I had a quest for breakthrough, like killing creatures with breakthrough, and then I had a quest for last gasp. So I decided to throw in a bunch of last gasp creatures and Necrom Mastermind. And I wanted to see how well it would synergize. The games that I had with this deck were really fun. So um, I've got my Moon Sugar Smugglers. Last Gasp gained two magic of this turn. That could be really helpful to get some of our higher end stuff on the board. We've got Shadow Mirror again. Bless his heart. He's a great guy. Uh, shuffle Shadow Mirror into your deck. Give it plus three, plus three, and increase its cost by three. We got ourselves a Sly Marsh Blade. Last Gasp, draw a card if you have seven or more Magicka. We will likely have seven or more Magicka in this deck. Adoring Fan, really fun. His last gasp is Adoring Fan will return. I didn't know how that would work with Necrom Mastermind. Uh, I'll give you a hint. It doesn't, really. I don't think it does. I want to keep him in here to keep experimenting with him because I only did that interaction once, but I was very curious about how these two cards interact with one another. Dark Guardian. I have not talked a whole lot about Dark Guardian, I don't think, but when your opponent draws a prophecy from a rune being destroyed, you draw a card as uh, blah, blah, blah. you draw a card as well. So Dark Guardian, I think it's one of the, the best guard creatures in the game. It just really helps you be aggressive and stay on pace with your opponent. Even if your opponent kills Dark Guardian with a javelin from a prophecy, you will still draw a card because Dark Guardian will have procced already. Galen the Shelterer, All-Star of Endurance, choose a creature or item in your hand. Shuffle three copies of it with plus three, plus three into your deck. Really good guy. Haunting Spirit, give a uh, random friendly creature plus three, plus three for their last gasp. It's a super good ability, especially when you have a Necrom Mastermind that you can use that to get an extra three damage on the board. House Kinsman, deal three damage to your opponent and gain three health. It's sort of like Haunting Spirit, but a little bit better because the damage directly goes to your opponent's face. Uh, Haunting Spirit is still a very good card, though. I don't, I don't want to talk shit about Haunting Spirit. Necromancer's Amulet, when a friendly creature dies, gain one health. Necromancer's Amulet is super cool. It's This deck is kind of similar to the last one that I played um, in the sense that we're running some of the same cards. Necromancer's Amulet, though, will be super nice because we want our creatures to die in this list, actually, so uh, having three of them, it feels appropriate, and it will keep us alive a little bit longer. Young Mammoth, 4-4 four, four with Breakthrough. It is a super simple card, but it is so good if you can get it on turn three. And look at that premium. I mean, it's great. Blackwood Distiller, Pilfer, gain three magic at this turn. Slay, gain one magic at this turn. We have some pretty decently high-cost creatures with the whole magicka gain thing, so... I thought that Blackwood was appropriate here. Determined Supplier, gain max magicka equal to Determined Supplier's power. We don't actually have a way of getting Determined Supplier's power up super high unless we hit it with Haunting Spirit, but if we can Necrom Mastermind while we have a Determined Supplier, that's actually two magicka that we'll be getting because we'll be getting one from him just with his base power, and then we'll be getting one from him dying with his base power for real. So really nice synergy. Martin Septum, at the start of your turn, gain all unspent Magicka from your last turn. When you have 30 or more Magicka, Martin Septum changes into a 30-30 Avatar of Akatosh. Avatar of Akatosh is a really fun card. I did get it to proc in one of my videos. I think it was the Slaying with Style Ebonheart video. Really fun list. If you haven't played it yet, go or watched it yet, uh, go give the video a watch and copy the deck code. Restless Templar, last gasp, gain 5 health. It's a 5-2. This is one of the more aggressive cards in the deck, just from its stat line. And uh, the gain 5 health is really cool. It lets you just hit your opponent, and then they have to deal with this in one way or another. And whatever they do to it is good for you, because if they just silence it, well, it's still a 5-2 body, and if they use removal on it, you gain 5 health. So, And then if they use the silence effect and removal on it, uh, well, then that's not in their deck for some of the bigger stuff. So Restless Templar is very good. Necrom Mastermind, trigger the last gasp of each friendly creature. I think I already talked about him, but that is the whole reason that we're playing the deck. Um, Thorn Hist Mage, just it's a guard and it gains us Magicka. When your max Magicka increases, Thorn Hist Mage gains plus one attack. Very solid card, especially if you can get it down on turn five. 
Night Shadow, Breakthrough and Drain. Six attack, five defense. I really like Night Shadow. I think it's a it's a slept on card for sure in the purple colors because I think a lot of people see Night Shadow and they see it as a less powerful version of Night Talon Lord or Blood Magic Lord, but that's kind of what it is and it's not trying to hide that. It does have Breakthrough and Drain though, which is something that the other two don't. So it provides a little bit more utility, especially in decks with unstoppable rage combos. Not that we have a rage combo in this, but Night Shadow is definitely something that you can't just ignore when it hits the board and the Drain is super helpful if you're behind. Eclipse Baroness, summon and last gasp, draw a card and reduce its cost by two. Eclipse Baroness is super high value if you can get a Necron Mastermind on the board while it's on there. And everything that Eclipse Baroness does with stuff like uh, the Summon and the Last Gasp, I mean, if we can hit a Gravesinger with an Eclipse Baroness, that would be ideal. It, it can definitely discount some really nice stuff. And then if it hits one of our lower cost things, like if it hits a Moon Sugar Smuggler, that's just two Magicka that we gain for free at that point. Uh, Red Brahman. Red Brahman. I always call him the Red Bro Man. Um, but yeah, Red Brahman. Or Red Brahman, Jesus Christ. Um, summon, silence and shackle all enemy creatures in this lane. Red Brahman's really fun. I don't know or remember exactly what the lore is for this guy, if he's a Legends original character or if he's like from uh, an Elder Scrolls game or something, but I really like him. I think his effect is really fun uh, as a unique nine cost creature. I think it's fair. Silence and Shackle, all enemy creatures in this lane, is super powerful, so it's something that deserves to be unique and deserves to be highly statted, and I don't think that anyone can really contest that, so Red Brahmin's just a lot of fun. Tazcad, the Packmaster. Breakthrough, charge. Last gasp, summon a 4-4 Durzog. His last gasp is uh, one of the weaker last gasps in the deck, I think, but still summoning a 4-4 creature for free? I'll take it. That's great. And Gravesinger, at the start of your turn, summon the highest cost creature from your discard pile and give it charge. At the end of the turn, put it on the bottom of your deck. The thing with Gravesinger, and with a lot of this deck, is that if it pulls back a Tazcad, or something, then we can just slam that Tazcad right back into something, we'll get another 4-4 Durzog, and then it'll go, and it'll be the top creature of our discard pile again, Gravesinger will pull it back next turn, and we can just keep this cycle going on and on and on, again and again and again forever, until someone deals with him. So that's the deck. We'll try to get maybe two or three games in. I know that a lot of you guys have said that you prefer the shorter videos, so I'm trying to get maybe uh, like 20 to 35 minutes is the sweet spot now, I think, that I'm going to go for. And we'll see how it turns out. I also do enjoy making the longer videos, so... Uh, I'm going to try to do a mix, but it seems like a majority of people prefer the shorter content. So anyway, uh, thank you for sticking around and watching this far. And if you skip this part, that's okay, but you won't see this anyway. So uh, without further ado, we'll try to get into some matches. Thank you. Okay, we're up against the High Elf Guest, the Forgotten Hero. On a... what is this? Telvani? On a Telvani deck. 78 card Telvani deck. I'm going to throw back the Red Brahmin. Don't really need him this early on, but I like seeing this cast of characters. Sly Marshblade. I mean, ideally you want to play him on turn 7, but a 3-2 body for 2 on turn 2. Pretty good. And there is a universe where this thing survives until turn 7 on the board, but I don't think we're living in that universe right now. Okay, Blackwood Distiller is good to see as well. Double Sly Marsh Blade. I'll get one of them down just to advance the board a bit. We'll see what his reaction to that is. Seems like it's nothing so far. Well, to avoid a potential mute that hurts my feelings. I'll just play this one, and uh, if he mutes me, I'll get over it. Okay, he's got a Venom Tongue. So that's something we'll have to look out for. Also has... Well, we also have Martin Septum now, which 
Should combo pretty well with this stuff. Got another one. Wow. Okay, well, I really don't mind them uh, killing this and gaining some Magicka because I will also gain some Magicka. And I'll put my other Sly Marsh Blade on the board. And then my Young Mammoth over here. And we will really lean into the aggro part of our name and just hit him a little bit more. So if he swings into this, this stays alive, then we can kill it with a Sly Marsh Blade and draw a card. Thorn Hist Mage, probably not going to be enough right now. Yep, definitely not going to be enough. Okay, I'll hit him like that. We'll just hit him a little bit with our Mammoth. And I'll gain some Magicka, do that. If I lay down Martin Septum now, we drop down to a 6, then we'd have 15 Magicka for next turn, assuming that he can't answer this. And then we'd get... Yeah, I'll play Martin. I'll play Martin and not do anything. Or we'll go up to 14 Magicka next turn, but then after that, we'll be very, very close. And he's just going to quit. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, I don't think that he had any way to answer that, so... Martin Septum is a very powerful card if you can't find an answer for him in about three turns you'll have a big problem on your hands in most cases okay now we're up against jervin 1973 the pickpocket they're rank one this season with how many days are in april they've got two more days left in the season here hopefully they can make it to legend but i don't know with the pickpocket tag that's it's probably not going to be something I enjoy playing against. <laughs> Thieves Den Master of Thieves is a cursed combo. Lay down the Slime Marsh Blade early. They're on 75 cards. Reading the description for Slime Marsh Blade at rank 1 is interesting. Maybe they just need a reminder. Okay. Hissed Speaker is cool. Monk Strike, wow. Hmm. Okay. Lay down my Dark Guardian. That'll be six damage. I think we can hold off a turn on, on our amulet. There's the Thieves Den. And he's got his silence effect. Okay. Well, let's just try to set up for a nice necrom ma uh, a nice ma I can't speak a nice necrom mastermind turn. Holy shit! I just had a stroke. Tell you, man, streaming, recording videos, it's hard. You've got to talk a lot. Sometimes you just turn stupid. So I'm curious with this interaction. Necron Mastermind, this will gain us one Magicka. Will this draw us a card then? How does that work? Does that take precedence? I'd also like to get a Necrom, or Necromancer's Amulet on board. But I think we'll just have to deal with this first. So let's see. Okay, it did not draw us a card. Um, thank you. And then we'll try to just hit him a bit. And now he's down to 8 life. So maybe Necron Mastermind goes in order from left to right. He's got another one of those.
Jesus Christ, dude. This, do you guys see why I'm irritated with silence effects? Okay, well, he needs to get a prophecy. Yeah, good game. And he's gonna just leave. That's fair. We're up against Bean Satoon. Set noon. Beans at noon. That's his name. Beans at noon, the pastry chef. They're on Rhetoran. So I'm expecting... I like this hand. I'm expecting to go up against some Grizzly Gourmets here. We're on an 83 card deck. So I'm worried about my Determined Supplier and my Shadow Mirror. He's going exploring. What does the card back say there? I'm not going to play Shadow Mirror because I'm worried about his stuff, and I think Shadow Mirror is better reactively anyway. Okay, Young Mammoth, get that down on the board. Treeminder, it's a pretty good matchup for the Mammoth. Moon Sugar Smuggler. Decent card. I just want to put down my beefy guys first, though. Bruma Armorer. That could be a big issue. So I think we just hit him. I think that's what we do. I'll play the... Determined Supplier. And the Moon Sugar Smuggler. Uh, yeah, and I'm just going to hit him. A bunch. He's up to 19. We gave him these two cards and he drew that one. So if one of the cards he just drew is something that he uses to kill us, that will kind of hurt my feelings. I can get a decent Necron Mastermind next turn. Probably damages this, right? Yep. That's interesting. He picked an Ash Servant with Explore. I guess he didn't pick, but he, that's what he got. So what do we have? Thorn Hist Mage. Huh. Yeah, this doesn't seem like it's a great Necrom turn, unfortunately. But it's still kind of good. We'll gain... Eh. How about we just play like this? Oops. Yeah, I mean, it would have been okay. But I don't think it would have been great. We would have gained one extra Magicka permanently, and then we would have just had two for that turn to do God knows what. I'd like to see Tazcad. That'd be nice. We haven't seen him at all. Divine Fervor. Doesn't super help him. That helps him. That helps him quite a bit. Well, now we might be reaching a problematic point. We're going to play... Hmm. This all costs 10, and we've got 7, so I could do Moon Sugar. I wouldn't need to do Moon Sugar. I could just play this. Yeah, I'll just play this. We'll do that. Shadow Mirror did what it needed to do. It has gone away. 
And now he has to choose one of these guys to try to kill. Okay, he can kill two of them now. Chooses to leave the one with breakthrough, which I find interesting. I guess it doesn't matter. There's our haunting spirit. Hmm. Well, I wish I still had my Necron... Oh. Phone just went off. Uh, yeah, I wish that I still had my Necron Mastermind in hand. Sometimes, um... Sometimes what seems like a good move... You know, two minutes ago, uh, might not be a great move now. And now, if I'm looking at my deck... I still have a lot of stuff that could come up and be helpful. Really, at this point, I'm looking for House Kinsman. Oh, he's got the White Run Protector. Yeah, I'm looking for House Kinsman. Grave Singer, though, could be pretty cool. Can't get turned into a. Sweet roll, too. <laughs> Which is nice. And then I'll lay down my Haunting Spirit. He should grab a Thorn Hist Mage. But... It says the highest cost creature from your discard pile. I'd assume that's just the one farthest down. I don't know why a Necrom Mastermind would be lower on the list than Thorn Hist Mage. And Plea to Kinnereth is cool here. Does look like he doesn't have a good answer for me, though. I love, too, it sounds like it makes the Taco Bell noise when the, the beast form creatures change. Okay. There's Tazcad, too. Oh, shit. Can we win? Let's count this up. This thing will have to hit here. This swings into him, then Tazcad has Breakthrough. Hmm. Let's see where the buff goes first. Perfect. Okay. So, this can go here. Then we play Tazcad. After we hit, like this... And then he's got to deal with him next. And maybe we could get a lucky Shadow Mirror, but he needs to kind of have Dawn's Wrath. Even still, that leaves a Durzog here. And we'll bring up, um, I guess, a Necron Mastermind again. Maybe it's a 50 50. Okay, well, this does not help him. Oh, oh, okay. He had the White Run Protector there. That does help him quite a bit. Okay, what can we do here? Um, Dark Guardian, Determined Supplier is 7 Magicka. I need to get a Night Shadow on board, and I can do that because of this guy. So, Determined Supplier, Dark Guardian, Night Shadow... And we'll see if he can break through this. He is on Rhetoran, so he's got access to uh, removal, or just in general, a lot of removal. That's one of them. It's a great, super fun, awesome, amazing card. <laughs> Feels great to play against. Yeah, I, uh, I hate to be like that guy, but if you play Feed... Um, you should get your Legends license revoked. Just like... Oh, it's so irritating. Uh, we'll just play like this. And I am not going to stick around for this one. It's just upsetting. Okay, it looks like we did get in the match after all. I closed down the app and then I restarted it, so 
here we are. Um, I will keep uh, I'll keep this whole hand. Okay, and sugar smuggler. And double Necromancer's Amulet has kind of been the motif tonight. I think we're going to lay down another one. Or our first one. Sorry, I'm all mixed around right now. Snail Juice 88. That is such a gross name. <laughs> so disgusting. Um... I'll just play down the Thorn Hist Mage immediately. Bump our Magicka up a little bit. Okay, he's on Prophecy Dominion. Uh, nice. Very cool. I don't think I've ever seen Prophecy Dominion seen Prophecy, all sorts of stuff, but never Prophecy Dominion. Uh, ch -ch -ch. Well, he's got four cards in his hand. I don't think we're going to be able to hit him, but having a Dark Guardian is pretty cool up against a Prophecy deck. He's used one Lightning Bolt already, and it wasn't on face. So Dark Guardian's kind of the the ultimate stopper to his game plan here. These colors have a lot of good prophecies in them, though. I'm seeing uh, Shrieking Harpy in our future. Leafwater Blessing, wow. I wonder how a Leafwater Blessing deck would work with a Necromancer's Amulet. Hmm. I honestly think Martin Septum might be our best bet to win. He might be our best victory condition that we've got. Throw that down. He's also bound to have javelins, too, in this deck. Yep. But we gain life anytime that he does something, so... Anytime he does something to one of my creatures, that is. Lay down my other amulet. The more removal I get out of his hand early, the better, I think. So he's Drain and Prophecy. That's interesting. It's very unique. Do I think he has enough creatures to move his Dark Mane? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll lay down a Thorn Hist Mage. Stealing guard from me isn't that big of an issue. How many cards is this guy on? It seems like he's on 75. If I had to guess. Probably has Barrels R's tinkering right now, right? So if I lay Martin down this turn, we go to 7 Magicka, then... It'll go up to 12 next turn, 12 plus 7, oh geez, uh, 12 plus 7 is 19. Then we'll just wait one more turn after that. So I'll play Martin, and I'll play the Moon Sugar Smuggler, just so that way we can bump up our Magicka a little bit more as well. 
And we just have to hope that he can't find a Piercing Javelin in his deck. Again, tinkering probably probably something coming up if he's laying down his Balmora Spymaster. Okay, there's his Javelin. That's unfortunate. But we did get a bunch of cards out of his hand, so now we're kind of even. And I'll be able to kill something over there. Okay. Is that Prophecy? No. Ash Servant is... Uh, it's a card. For sure. Necron Mastermind. That keeps showing up when I don't have anything to use it on. Thieves Den. Wow. Ransack, too. He gets a Vigilant Giant, really? That is rough. Um, if we can get... Yeah, that's pretty good. Slime Marsh Blade. Okay. Let's see what we draw here. Restless Templar. That's also good. Okay. That helped us get back to a good spot. He's going to give me a card. So that's nice. Okay. Well, could have been worse. I think we... I don't think we're going to get anything better. It's pretty damn good. Let's see what cards we get. Necron Mastermind. That's kind of what I was hoping for. And it's discounted too, so I could play a Restless Templar with it as well. I think I'm going to put down the Determined Supplier over here. And the Necron Mastermind over here. We gain more life. Gain another card. It's a Haunting Spirit. We get another one of these guys. I'll kill this guy, and then we'll hit him. And now we've got both lanes blocked off. Thank you. Sajra's agent. That can slow me down, but it can't stop me. At this point, we've got one more Necrom Mastermind. And I think it's going to be time to lay down our Dark Guardian. Uh, I'll swing with the Necrom because he, he's done his job at this point. Then I'll swing with this. We will attempt to get him a little bit. We'll play like that. And we'll see what we can do here. He's down to one Javelin, so I'm not super worried about those. He does have the ultimate heist, though. It's kind of, uh, kind of an annoying card. I was really hoping we'd get our guy there. Okay. Swing with the Drain Creature first. And he gets that guy. Not a great card. Um, hitting him with the one extra damage doesn't seem very valuable. I'll play all my cards, though play everything I've got. If he has another ultimate heist, that brings me down to 15. He's going to ransack. I'm hoping he's just down to actions in his deck now. And that's his own house kinsman. Okay, so uh, 11, 12, plus 8. We can do this this turn, and our red brahmin will tremendously help out. I'm going to swing with the Drain Guy first. And I'm going to swing in this lane entirely. That way. OK, 
and we've got the Baroness, and we get the win. That's awesome. So I didn't need to use Red Brahmin, but we had him in case we needed him. I think that one is probably going to be the last game that we play. Um, I have to go to the bar tonight with some friends, so uh, I'm glad that we could record those matches. I did take a little bit of a break in between recording the first ones and this one, so I hope that's not super noticeable. But yeah, uh, I think that that's going to be it, and I will see you guys on the rest of the internet. So have a good night, have a good weekend, wherever you're at, and hopefully there will be a bunch more videos coming out soon. I have ideas for a bunch of decks that I want to build. My collection has been getting bigger, so I've been able to add more cards to it. Unfortunately, the monthly cards, those are going to be hard to collect, all of them, because I did miss out on quite a few. So um, with that said, talk to you guys later.